Hey everyone, I'm DT10 and in this video I'll be reviewing and showcasing Dalek Mod Update 69, which is the Conquest update. This is by far the biggest update we've seen for Dalek Mod 1.16, featuring new TARDISes including the brand new 14th and 15th Doctors, a new TARDIS health system, new weapons, blocks, mobs including K9 and so much more, as well as Scaro, the first major planet in this version of the mod. There is a lot to go through and I'll be covering most of it in this video. If you end up enjoying it then please consider subscribing as we're approaching 4,000 subscribers and your help to get there would be amazing. Just before we get into it I wanted to mention a few things. First I'd highly recommend checking out both videos that Swid Team have released for this update. There is a story video which I actually feature in so see if you can spot me. This is made by a new team of people so make sure you go and show them some support. There is a link to it in the description. Swood have then also released a full feature breakdown of this update, which is definitely worth a watch and also in the description. However, it does mean I've slightly changed how I'm going to do my video this time. Instead of just trying to go through as many features as I can, I'm going to lean a bit more into the review side of things and try to provide some actual opinions on the features that have been added. I do try and do this normally, but I end up effectively just saying that everything looked great and calling it a day. With that being said, it is a fantastic update, so that might happen anyway, but I'm going to try and make a conscious effort to provide some genuine feedback, as well as showcasing what this update has to offer. Anyway, enough rambling, let's get started. So first things first, we'll take a look at the new blocks in this update, and there are really a lot of them. So the first thing I've laid out here is the panel variants. So if you go into the creative inventory, as you can see, there is a new tab called panel variants. So almost every single panel in the game and every single monitor now has on top of its original metal variant, you've got a variant for every single one of the wood types in Minecraft, or at least in this version of Minecraft, as well as the custom Thalma wood, which we'll take a little look at later on. So we did actually already have this scanner in the mod. It was just called the wooden scanner. However, now it's been renamed to the spree scanner and we've got all of these different variants. And I think this is a really, really great change. It's really, really nice for building to be able to incorporate so many different wood types, especially these crimson and warped ones. I think these will be really, really helpful. And I do think it's great that we've got variants for every single panel as well. That means if you're making a wooden console or something like that, the panels will blend in a lot more and not stick out as much. One thing I would say say though is it's great that they've added an entire new inventory tab for these however it still feels really cluttered the order of these also seems very strange so for example right here we've got the oak coordinate panel then the oak dimension selector the oak waypoint and the oak chameleon panel and yet everywhere else in the inventory it lists out all of the wood types for one specific panel so we've got all of the coordinate panels then we've got all the dimension selectors etc in fact even the oak planks are inconsistent for this we've got the oak plank sonic interface the oak planks light alternator don't get me wrong i am being really picky here but in my opinion there isn't actually a need for an entire new panel variant section instead if possible they could implement something like you have on bedrock edition where all of the variants of a specific block so for example different colored beds different planks for example Example, they just have one of those items and then a nice little plus icon and if you click on that plus then you extends and you see all of the other variants I think that'd be really really cool to see in this mod So for example, you've just got the coordinate panel with a little plus and if you click on it You get a long list of all the different types of coordinate panel and you can choose the one you want And then if you're wondering how you craft these you have to craft the original panel first using the normal crafting recipe And then if you want a variant you can simply surround it with some planks. But yeah overall some really really nice additions I'm really happy Happy to see this level of customization in the mod and these textures look absolutely brilliant. So next up in the list of new blocks added, we've also got loads of new roundels. The first ones we're going to be taking a look at are these, the dark star roundels and the dark star strips. So we had some very, very similar blocks in Dalek Mod 1.12. I've completely forgotten what they're called. I know they were used in the Epsimo TARDIS. I think their name might have been something to do with that. I'm not sure. I'll put it up in the edit. But yeah, it's really, really nice to see these blocks return and with much better textures than they had last time. And then we've also got some bone roundels. This is a really Really, really great addition. Bone blocks naturally lend themselves very well to roundels anyway. In fact, I use bone blocks in pretty much all of my classic interiors for the roundels, so it's really, really cool to see some proper roundel designs. I also really, really like the connecting bits here. It would have been pretty easy to just keep the bone block texture and in the roundel block just add sort of the sideways version, but I really like that they've gone out of their way to make a slightly different texture, and this connecting bit sort of makes it feel like one continuous piece of bone, which is pretty cool. And then we've got two really interesting 
interesting roundels. These are the calcite roundels and the tough roundels. The reason these are so interesting to me is because obviously calcite and tough aren't actually in this version. Like the default blocks aren't in this version. They're 1.17 features and we're in 1.16. There is no such thing as calcite. There is no such thing as tough or any of the tough variants that we're going to get in 1.21. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love these blocks. It's really, really nice to have these blocks in this version in some capacity. And these textures look absolutely incredible. I particularly love the square tough version. It looks really, really good. However, it does make me wonder why have we only got them for these two blocks specifically? I mean, there's loads of future version of blocks that I'd love to see variants of in the mod. For example, the wood types, mangrove particularly, but cherry and bamboo as well. Imagine how amazing it would be to have panel variants and roundels and stuff of all of those future wood types. That would be really, really cool. Obviously, that is a bit of a massive ask, but it did just make me curious why we've got these two blocks specifically. Hopefully, this is potentially teasing that we'll see Dalek Mod move out of 1.16.5 at some point in the near future. I am just speculating, of course, but it would be really cool to see. We've then also got the Honeycomb Roundels. I absolutely love these. They look really, really good, and they're actually utilized in a really nice custom interior, which we'll see a little bit later on. We've then also got the Red Sandstone and Sandstone Roundels. They're pretty simple, nothing much to say about these ones. And then and we've also got a new type of refined Dalekanium Roundel, simply called Refined Dalekanium Roundel Alterna. So as you can see, there is actually already some refined Dalekanium Roundels in the mod. However, as you can see, the texture is incredibly different. I know we've already got these yellow terracotta Roundels, which are clearly intended for copper, but in my opinion, these actually look much better. I think the color is much more accurate to the actual coral walls, and yeah, just a really, really nice addition. And finally, for the new Roundels, we've got the Prismarine Brick Roundels and the Dark Prismarine Roundels. I have to admit, I thought these were already in the mod. I thought they'd been added last update, but I guess not, or potentially they've had some sort of change as they were mentioned in the change log. But yeah, I absolutely love these. They've got this really nice sort of sea lantern in the middle and yeah, some really, really nice roundels. The only thing that does really bug me is that they're off center. This side and this side are off-centered. There's more space on this side than there is on that side. There's more space down here than there is up there. I mean, yeah, I get that it's really difficult with these 16 by 16 textures to put something in the middle since it would have to have a two by two center, but come on, that is really annoying. It's exactly like the vanilla command block. Once you see that there's three pixels on that side and two on that side, you, you just can't unsee it. But yeah, still a really, really nice block nonetheless. And now we're onto the brand new wood type. So this is the Thalma wood set, and this naturally spawns on Scaro. So you've got all of the blocks you'd expect in this wood set. We've got the logs, we've got the wood variant, we've got the stripped Thalma log. Interestingly, there's no stripped Thalma wood. I wonder if that might be added at a future time and it might have just been overlooked. We've then also got the plank, stairs, slabs, and the button, of course. And then we've got this beautiful texture for the trap door. I really, really like this. It goes really, really nicely with the door and it just looks really, really nice. And then we've also got these really beautiful roundels for both the log and the stripped log variants. I just love this sort of tree trunk rings kind of design. It goes really, really well. I've also placed this sapling here just purely because I think it's a really, really nice little texture. I should point out, however, these cannot grow in the overworld and you cannot bone meal them. It won't do anything. So that's pretty much all of the major blocks that have been added in this update. And next up, we're on to the items. So first of all, we've got a new food, which is a banana. The banana on its own isn't very interesting. However, as you can see, if we eat this in survival mode, we actually get one of these, a banana peel item. And this actually drops on the floor and not into our inventory. And you'll see why if we go and pick this up. As you can see, if we just walk over this thing, we slip. This has to be one of the best features the Dalek mod has ever added. I mean, n literally nobody asked for this. Not a single person asked for this, but I love it. It's so random and so brilliant. And it didn't work at all how I expected it to. So obviously, as you may have seen, you can actually throw these items. But as far as I'm aware, this doesn't actually do anything. As you can see, if I go and hit an entity with one of these, you get the same amount of knockback. They don't stay on the floor or anything. I don't really know what the purpose of throwing them actually is. However, if you literally just drop the item on the floor, entities, including the player and other mobs, if they walk over it, they will slip. As you can see, that pig just went over it. You don't go too far. However, I did find that if you jump before hitting it, you can actually go decently far. As you can see, that was quite a long one. If you time it well, these can be, believe it or not, 
a genuinely interesting mode of transport. Look at that. That's that's quite a boost. And then we've also got loads and loads of bow tie variants. So white is the default bow tie, which you can craft with four white wool and one string. And then all of the rest of these bow tie variants, there's one for every single color, can be crafted exactly the same as we saw with the coordinate panels by placing the white bow tie and the die next to it. We've then also got some brand new cosmetic items. So these are the fedoras and the scarves. So there are a total of seven of each of these you've got the blue fedora you've got the brown the dark red the light blue the pink the purple and the red so these can be worn by the player as you can see these look absolutely brilliant however as you may have seen these can also be applied to k9 which we'll get to in just a second as for the scarves you've got light blue blue patterned red white purple and dark red once again these go on your head slot and look absolutely brilliant this i presume is the fourth doctors it certainly looks like it to me yeah really really cool textures and once again can be applied to k9 just before we get to k9 though let's go around the other side and look at some more of the new items in this mod. So guns have had a bit of an overhaul. We did have some guns previously. For example, we had the Dalek gun stick and I believe the Dalek cannon was around before this update. However, now we've got four new types of gun. We've got the pistol, the assault rifle, the unit rifle and the unit pistol. So both pistols and both rifles work in exactly the same way. However, have a slightly different texture and a slightly different crafting recipe. As you can see, the pistol is just crafted with three stainless steel ingots, two steel and a gunpowder and then you can turn this pistol into a unit pistol by combining it with a netherite ingot and it's exactly the same for assault rifles into unit rifles. These unit guns are very expensive however for good reason and that's because they take different bullets. So previously you just had the regular bullet however now you've got golden bullets and dark star bullets. You've also got bullet casing but that is more just for the crafting recipe for these things. Speaking of as you can see you can craft the bullet casing with five gold ingots and then you can craft 12 regular bullets with one bullet casing one iron and one gunpowder and then the same crafting recipe applies for golden bullets you just replace the iron with some gold it's slightly different for dark star you still get 12 but this time you need a dark star ingot as well as a dalekanium ingot and the same bullet casing and gunpowder so these bullets do varying amounts of damage with the bullets doing the least and then the dark star bullets doing the most and what sets the unit guns apart is that they can take these dark star bullets so as you can see a pistol can only take a bullet and a golden bullet and exactly the same with this assault rifle right here however the unit pistol can take a golden and a dark star bullet as can the unit rifle meaning they can deal more damage so let's actually take a look at these things in action so first of all we'll just take some regular bullets and try out the pistol so as you can see if you hold right click you get this really cool aiming animation you have to wait for that bar to fill up and then you can let go of right click to shoot and as you can see it will make a really really cool sound the bullet will release and do a decent amount of damage it's hard to see exactly how much without other mods which unfortunately i don't have installed and then it'll also take some of the durability these pistols have 300 in total so if we keep shooting the same pig as you can see it only takes two hits for it to die so these pistols even just with the default bullets are actually really quite powerful as you can see if we shoot this cow it only takes two hits to completely kill it which is pretty good however we can do a lot better next up we've got the assault rifle i just like to comment on these incredible models i believe it was kaseki who did these they did a great job on them they look really really good but yeah as you can see the assault rifle unlike the pistol doesn't have the bar however it does still have a bit of a cooldown as you can see i'm spamming this but i'm only firing at this ray so you can't completely spam it but it is still far more powerful than the pistol and the other thing is it doesn't actually have durability i don't know if this is a bug or a permanent feature but if it's a permanent feature then this is an incredibly powerful weapon you may have also seen that we've actually got some bullet casing back so it has a percentage chance of dropping some bullet casing when you shoot and that means you can then reinvest them into more bullets which i think is really really cool But yeah, I think the overhaul of the gun system in general is really, really good. And I think it's a great time to do it, what with the new boss fight, which we'll get to once we get to Scaro, which I promise it is coming. Anyway, our last item to have a look at is the Timey Wimey Detector, which has a really, really cool texture, by the way. So this is the crafting recipe. As you can see, it needs four redstone blocks, a redstone repeater, redstone comparator, note block, 
clock and redstone circuit which requires all of the following items to create and this thing basically does exactly what it does in doctor who which is detect weeping angels which leads me quite nicely onto the mob section of this video weeping angels so there are now five variants of weeping angels six if you include this one at the end so we've got the default stone one and then we've got a diorite and a granite version right here which i think is an absolutely brilliant idea to sort of make them feel a lot more minecrafty instead of just adding variants that we see in the show have it be stone and then utilize the other stone types. I think it would also be really, really cool to see an andesite version as well. I know it might be quite similar to the stone, but it would just complete the set really, really nicely. And then we've also got blackstone and gilded blackstone versions. This gilded blackstone version is definitely my favorite. And then we've also got a sixth variant, which is a crawling weeping angel. So this one only spawns with the stone variant and is a bit rarer than the rest of them in my testing. And yeah, this is a really, really cool feature. So all of these aren't actually weeping angels. As I said, these are weeping angel statues. So these statues cannot be crafted. I believe I believe they have a chance to drop from a weeping angel although i might have made that up and yeah when you place this down you get a random variant and a random pose to go along with it however you can actually change the pose by powering it with redstone so as you can see if we power this thing we'll get a different pose and it does it randomly as far as i'm aware i think this would work a lot better in a cycle in my opinion make it predictable and then it might actually be usable in some sort of redstone contraption i don't know i'm, I'm not a redstone person but i think a lot of these poses are new in this update and yeah they look really really good so we will obviously also take a look at the actual weeping angel item i just thought it'd be easier to showcase all of these variants with some statues they do have some new sounds though so if we place one down as you can see if we look away i'll turn it up in the edit that you get this sort of really cool stone moving stone grating kind of sound and then as soon as you turn around you get that really, really cool sound, which I think is from the Doctor Who episode Blink, if I've understood that correctly. So as you can see, if we now use our Timey Wimey detector, it will say one angel detected. And if we head into survival mode, as you can see, this thing does actually have durability, only 50. And we may as well showcase the actual weeping angel hunting features while we're here. So obviously while you're looking at them, you can interact with them, you can punch them and they won't move. But as soon as you turn around, they will start chasing after you. And it is, it is genuinely quite scary, especially when you're in a cave and it's dark. Oh my God, see, it's so scary. They just come out of nowhere. So as you just saw, these things can damage you. However, they also have a second really, really cool feature. So hopefully we'll be able to see it here. If I turn around, as you can see, we are dying. But if you ignore that, as you can see, we have been teleported back in time. And this is, this is just so, so cool. So we're now in Minecraft Classic. You get the classic spider textures, the classic skeleton textures. You get all the amazing custom sounds. You get the classic blocks and stuff, which were present in the last version, I believe. Caves do also generate now, by the way. I think that was an issue in previous versions of the mod. But yeah, you now get full cave generations in these older versions. And I don't really have time to showcase it in this video, but these Weeping Angels can also send you back to Imp Dev or Cave Game as well as classic anyway that's us pretty much done with weeping angels now we're on to k9 so you can acquire a k9 spawner in survival mode using the kablam computer which by the way has had some updates so you can now get loads more items in this thing you can get all of the new bow ties you can get the banana you can get all the new scarves and everything and as you can see right here you get the k9 spawner as well so once you've spawned in your k9 you simply have to right click this guy <laughs> And as you just heard, you get that really cool voice line, you get some nice hearts, and yeah, he's now yours, and you've tamed him. So this guy will wander about, and I believe he will actually follow, yeah, as you can see, he will follow you if you walk far enough away. However, you can right-click him again, and as you can see, the tail will go down, and now he's sat in place. And just like a normal dog, he now can't move. And then you can just right-click again to unsit him. So, by default, this guy will only attack Dalek mod mobs. It won't attack vanilla mobs mobs so for example if i spawn in a zombie right here as you can see it's perfectly content to just leave this guy alone however i say by default because if i actually punch this zombie as you can see it will now go ahead and kill this guy and it actually has an incredibly powerful laser as you just saw i do really like this laser effect although i do find it interesting that they're separate lasers as opposed to one continuous laser which is what we see in the show it was one continuous laser in dark mod 1.12 but to be fair that did have some issues 
associated with it. Sometimes it would look a bit weird clipping through stuff. It could cause some lag issues and stuff. So this is almost definitely the better decision. And then as you can see, if I spawn in something like a Dalek, K9 will attack this guy even though I haven't actually touched him. However, the Dalek will fight back as you just saw. So just to be a bit cruel to K9, let's spawn in a load of cyber drones. And as you can see, this guy will have a bit of a hard time with them. And then eventually, if he takes enough damage, as you can hear, you get this really cool sort of audio cue that he's actually below 15 health. I should also mention, by the way, when I've spawned in all of these cyber drones and caused loads of destruction everywhere, that these do not have config associated with them. So you can decrease the amount they spawn if you want to. And they do also spawn less than they did in the last update by default, which I think is really, really good because it was a bit ridiculous last update. But yeah, this guy is now under 15 health, as we know from the audio cue. However, we can repair him. All you need to do is right click with a redstone circuit as you can see you get some hearts and if you keep right clicking eventually he will go all the way up to full health however we're not done there you may remember with the fedoras and the scarfs from earlier that you can actually apply these to k9 and in order to do that he needs to be dyed the right color so for example this blue fedora requires you to dye him blue so if we grab ourselves some blue dye and right click k9 as you can see his entire body color completely changes and then if we right click again with the blue fedora as you can see he equips it and it just looks so so cool we can do exactly the same with the blue scarf as you can see and you can have them both at the same time and basically dress up k9 however you'd like to there are endless amounts of customization for this guy it's really really cool to see and you can really just make him feel like your own which is something that was seriously lacking in dalek mod 1.12 when we last saw this guy he sort of felt a bit soulless and was exactly the same for everyone but with these new sort of ear animations the new sounds and especially the cosmetics you can really make him feel like a pet so that's pretty much us done with k9 however there are a few more mob features we need to look at, mainly the Daleks. So there are actually a load of new Dalek variants and these Dalek variants have Dalek variants. Firstly, we've got the pink fluffy Dalek, the return. It looks absolutely brilliant. I'm so, so glad that they decided to keep the love hearts in sort of the same formation as they were in previous Dalek mod updates. So we'll go in order. And first of all, we've got the return of the pink fluffy Daleks, which is so, so cool. If you didn't know, these guys were a bit of a staple of older versions of the Dalek mod, but they haven't been present in 1.16 yet. But yeah, these guys look absolutely incredible. They take some design elements from both the 1.16 Daleks and the classic Daleks. And yeah, they look really, really good. The other thing that makes these pink fluffy Daleks unique is that instead of trying to kill you, they actually heal you. So if you spawn one down in your world, as you can see, it will try and shoot you, but these hearts actually heal you. I, I cannot get over how much I love these guys. And by the way, you may be able to tell, these guys do actually have some subtle variant changes. So for example, that one's got red hearts, whereas this one has white hearts. And I believe just spawning a few in that they are the only two variants. You've got white hearts or you've got red hearts. I'll just let them roam about while we cover the rest of the Daleks. Next up, we've got Action Daleks. So they spawn on Scarrow Mountains, which I promise we will get to at the end of this video. And once again, these guys have lots of different variants. This time we'll go a little bit further away. As you can see, just spawning them down, they do really vary quite a lot. So you've got these sort of all yellow ones. You've got some black and red and sort of silvery ones. You've got some with a black cap and a yellow bit, which I believe these are like the commander versions of the yellow ones. I believe I'm right in saying. And it's exactly the same, like the black cap silver ones are sort of the like higher ups of the silver capped ones. I think I'm right in saying that. And I need to stop flying away because the rest of my Daleks have despawned. Brilliant. But yeah, next up we've got the Time War Special Weapons Daleks. So this is a new type of Special Weapons Dalek that design wise is in line with the Time War Daleks that are already present in the mod. However, it's not just a design thing. These guys actually have a custom firing mechanic. So if we spawn one of these in, as you can see, there's a few different variants. So you've got the classic Time War one right here. You've got the commander version of that with the black cap and then you've got a white version with the commander version of that as well. You've also got these really cool black versions including just a full black one and then like a black and bronze one. Oh and this red one that looks really really good. So the key difference with these guys is unlike the other special weapon Starlicks they don't fire an explosive laser they just fire a laser which does a lot more damage than a regular Dalek. So as you can see if I go into survival mode it will do a lot more damage than a regular Dalek would. Oh no, oh that is, that is so sad.
Anyway, these Daleks are disappearing in front of my eyes, but next up we've got the Nether and Ender Daleks. So these were actually present in the last update, and they have been for some time. However, they've had some remodeling. So I believe, funny enough, this texture was actually present in the last version, if I recall correctly. But yeah, there are some brand new variants for the Nether one, and the Ender Dalek has actually got a new model as well. So if we spawn some of these guys in, as you can see, there's loads more variation in the Nether Daleks now. I particularly like these sort of gold and black ones. I have a feeling these brown ones are the most common and then you've also got the existing netherrack style ones that were in the mod already. And then I absolutely love the Ender Daleks. So you've got these absolutely beautiful kind of cyan-y purple kind of textures that just look absolutely beautiful. As well as that, you've got the purple ones as you can see right here. And then from what I can tell, the last variant is this sort of combination of black, purple and bronze. These Daleks might be some of my favourite in the entire game. They look so, so good. And then as you can see, there's actually a random chance for it to have a slightly different weapon as well. And then last but not least, they're not here anymore, but we've got the Paradigm Daleks. So these Daleks spawn inside Dalek ships, which are also found on Scaro. And there's loads of different variants of these guys. And I really, really like these ones because they're so, so colourful. Of course, as they are in the show, right? So I particularly love this red one. It looks so, so cool. The eye stalk is really, really nice and I just love this sort of deep red colour. The texturing on all of these is phenomenal. But yeah, that's about it for all of our mobs. And now we're finally ready to move on to some of the very exciting stuff. And to do that, we're going to need to head inside the TARDIS. And right here, you can see one of the brand new, or should I say old TARDIS exteriors. This is the return of the gingerbread exterior, a favourite of mine from Dalek Mod 1.12, and I'm so glad to see it back in the mod. But yeah, if we head on inside, as you can see... There are also some new interiors, this one of course being the 14th and 15th Doctors. So as someone who's built a bit of a reputation for building TARDIS interiors, excuse the pun, I would just like to comment on quite how incredible this interior is. I particularly love the use of the quartz stairs, it's a really genius way of making what is effectively a full block appear right in the center of a 2x2. Two two. It means they can be spaced out a lot more evenly and overall look really really good. I also think the incorporation of the walls is a really interesting choice, it does kind of mean that when you're walking you end up going up blocks all the time because you can sort of just hop over these glass without having to jump and you do sort of go up and down and everything but from a visual perspective it does create an incredible effect. I also absolutely love these spirals and everything I think they look really really good. Interestingly they've opted for nothing on this side so if you didn't know obviously in the show this is a half set. I decided to add another custom spiral here in my design but yeah that's really up to the designer and I think this looks incredible nonetheless. But this isn't the only interior that's been added nor was the gingerbread the only exterior that's been added so if we head over to the chameleon panel as you can see we've got the new gingerbread police box then we've also got the halloween exterior which i think is really really interesting it's like a coffin police box i've never seen this done before very very cool we've got the epsimo police box which makes a return once again from dalek mod 1.12 we've got the scrap police box which looks really really good the legacy police box from way back when in dalek mod 1.8 we've got the scrap police box which I absolutely love the design of. I particularly love this. It's just randomly got one of those emergency exit signs on it. Brilliant. Then we've got the MK14 police box. I'm assuming this is a reference to something. It is a bit late while I'm recording this so it might have just slipped my mind what the reference actually is but please let me know down in the comments. Next up we've got the Tarby police box which is time and relative B. I'm, I'm presuming and you've got this really nice sort of honeycomb looking exterior and a brown variant to go with it and this relates to a custom interior which we'll see in just a second and I'd just like to comment on this incredible description. We've then also got the fridge which was already in the mod I believe but there's a few new variants so we've got dark grey which I think is this one although it's very similar to the first one we saw and then we've also got brown which is this one right here and grey. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure what that one is, because that is definitely black. Next up, we've got the Prismarine police box, which again looks amazing. I love this use of sort of the dark Prismarine for the outside and then Prismarine bricks from the inside. Looks really, really cool. And last but not least, we've got the amazing sand castle exterior, which has a second variant made of red sand, which is a really nice touch. One thing that is interesting is that there's a lot of police boxes. So, for example, the gingerbread, the Halloween, I guess, to an extent, the Epsimo, MK4. 14, scrap, pretty much all of the new ones have been police boxes and yet they're not listed 
under the police box toggle. Now this does make sense because otherwise you'd have to cycle through all of them to get to the one you actually want but I'd suggest maybe renaming this to like the doctor's police boxes or like cannon police boxes something along those lines so that people don't get confused because it is a bit strange seeing police box separate to Tarby police box separate to prismarine police box you, you get the idea but yeah overall some absolutely brilliant exterior additions and we'll also take a look at the interiors so unfortunately i'm not going to have time to go through all of them so we're just going to have to look at the pictures but first of all the coral console room which was already in the mod seems to have had a bit of an update i definitely don't remember this being blue i believe it was green before but they've opted for blue this time which i think is an interesting change i personally preferred the green but that's just personal opinion then we've also got the refit control room so I believe I'm right in saying that this is actually from the show, the third Doctor's era, I believe. I think this is when the TARDIS console was like bought out of the TARDIS or something like that. I, my classic Who knowledge is terrible. You're going to have to correct me down in the comments. Then we've got this really cool custom bee inspired interior, which of course goes with the Tarby exterior. This is really, really cool. Great utilization of the honeycomb randalls. And you can see just how well they go with the default honeycomb blocks. We've then also got the diamond anniversary control room which is what we're in right now the return of the epsimo control room from dalek mod 1.12 utilizing the new dark star blocks i knew they had a connection to the epsimo stuff and last but not least i think this one is also new it's listed on the changelog as mk14 however there isn't actually an interior called mk14 i'm presuming it's this one because this one looks unfamiliar to me i might be wrong in that but yeah i believe this goes with the mk14 exterior so yeah overall some really great additions and i might have to check out this Tarby interior at the end of the video. There are also some other things to check out while we're in the TARDIS. So firstly, there's been a change to the way that the rotor block works. Instead of just constantly going up and down, it will now stay in this position unless powered by redstone, where it will then continue to go up and down until it's unpowered. One thing which I think would be really cool to see is that if you unpower it in its down state, it actually stays in its down state as opposed to returning back up. Next up, we've got this thing right here, the panel interface, which is craftable. As you can see right here, you need two Zyton crystals, which can be smelted down from Zyton ore. You need two smooth stone, all of the panels, and then a scanner. So it is quite an expensive craft. However, this is actually quite a necessary item. And what this allows you to do is repair your panels. That is right. Panel now take durability. So if we go back up to our console, pretty much all of these panels now have a hidden durability system. So if we take this flight panel as an example, which gives me a great excuse to show off the brand new flight system. So as you can see, the TARDIS is much more dynamic now. You have a really, really cool flight system. It's tilted and everything, just like it was in Dalek Mod 1.12. And it's a lot smoother than it was in Dalek Mod 1.12, actually. It looks really, really cool. The other incredible feature which I've noticed is that the Gallifrey and text in the bottom which previously was really sort of in your face but they've now sort of toned it back a bit actually visually responds to the movement of the TARDIS so as you can see they're spinning really slowly and then if we begin to accelerate they start to spin a lot faster and if we go into full sprinting they sort of spin really really quickly which is just such a cool feature and it makes the whole flight system feel a lot more responsive and then as you can see there's also been a bit of an overhaul to the actual flight UI there's some really nice new texturing and everything just looks a little bit cleaner yeah overall some really great changes I just love how responsive this TARDIS is in flight it looks really really cool but yeah going back over to our panel interface if we then press select panel as you can see we have our list of all of the panels and if you press flight panels and select the category you would have a list of all of the various flight panels if you had more than one in your TARDIS but we've only got the one and what's really really cool is it automatically picks up the exact flight panel that's in this TARDIS so we can select this panel right here it will give us some information about it and I've just realized I've got this completely wrong it's not a durability system it's a damage system which relates directly to a brand new TARDIS crashing mechanic so unfortunately we're not really going to have time to look at that in this video but it's basically that if something goes wrong during flight you pull the handbrake or something and there's a little bit of fire around the console so you get some cloister bell sound effects and stuff and yeah your panels may become damaged and this is how you repair them yeah overall I'd say this system is really really good it's quite complex but this block is really quite intuitive and once you get the hang of it it's relatively easy to repair everything I think the whole repairing stuff is also a really really good idea because the TARDIS is relatively easy in the grand scheme things to get your hands on and once you have it unless you lose it you literally have it forever whereas this means you actually need to keep on top of things and repair stuff if it gets damaged and yeah it's just a really really good system in my opinion one thing that i think would be cool to see though is something like a 
TARDIS manual item, a bit like you have in new TARDIS mod, where instead of having to rely on outside sources to get all your information on how to repair everything and stuff, you can actually do it within the mod itself. I think that'd be really, really cool. Anyway, our next item is the printer. So this is craftable, it doesn't naturally spawn in your TARDIS, and you need three smooth stone, a black plastic block, two redstone circuits, and then some various assorted dyes in order to create this. And this is really, really cool. I actually was surprised initially that it only worked in the TARDIS dimension. However, it does make sense because it links directly to the TARDIS computer, which used to be called the Data Writer, but has been renamed. So you can fill this printer up with ink sacks and paper. As you can see, I filled it up a little bit already, but every ink sack fills the ink up by 5%, and then paper is individual percentages. Something I have noticed is you literally have to put the paper in one at a time. Even if you hold it down, it doesn't go that quickly. It's not the end of the the world but the noise can get quite annoying and it can take some serious time to fill all the way up to 100% so maybe a quality of life feature where you can sort of shift right click to put an entire stack in or something would be cool to see in the future but yeah I bet you're probably wondering what this printer does so if we open the TARDIS computer and type slash help you get a list of various different commands to do with this TARDIS computer and we're specifically going to be looking at the print ones so the first one we're going to do is slash add printer and as you can see this requires the coordinates of your printer so if you hover over the printer and press F3 then you can get your targeted block coordinates. So for me, that's 141.130.386. I'd recommend typing them in chat just so that you remember them. And then if we go back over to the TARDIS computer, you can do slash add printer 141.130.386 like that. And it'll say printer has been installed. So as you can see from the help menu, there are two different print commands, slash print and slash print LN. So slash print is more for commands and stuff. And I'm not really a commands person, so I'm not gonna pretend like I know what I'm talking about with this and just leave the professionals to talk about this feature. Whereas if you do slash print LN, as you can see, you can actually write a message. So I've written a little message right here. And then if we hit enter, as you can see, output has been sent to the printer. The printer model actually updates with this bit of paper sticking out, which looks so, so cool. And then if you right click, you get the printed paper item, as you can see right here. And if you right click this printed paper, look at that you get your message in this amazing little GUI pop-up this is another one that I really didn't see coming but it is a great feature and then over here we've also got another new block the TARDIS hologram this is also craftable as you can see you need four blocks of stainless steel a TARDIS key a hologram block which requires a sonic emitter which is quite expensive and then chameleon panel and a TARDIS state detector and finally a scanner as well by the way another little thing to note is that they've made this the icon of the TARDIS menu which in my opinion works so much better than the default TT capsule it's really cool to see a little police box up here yeah this does pretty much what you'd expect it to it's a hologram of the TARDIS you can right click to open the doors and then close them and then you can shift right click to change the variant so we're on legacy police box right now however you can literally cycle through any police box that you want including some that aren't actually available on the default chameleon panel as you can see there's 21 here instead of 17 you've got the comic con police box the Tenebra Tenebrosus, Tenebrosus police box right here. There's a few different extra ones that you can apply to this TARDIS hologram. This is also a really good opportunity to mention that some more snow maps have been added. So snow maps were added, I believe, update 67 in the uh, Renegade update, but they were only for a select amount of police boxes, whereas they've added a lot more in this update. One of them is for the Epsimo police box, a new exterior in this update. So if you click snowy, you can get the snow map and then there's a few extra options. You've also got locked, which basically gives it collision and means you can't walk inside it. And then you've also got solid, which gives gets rid of the sort of hologram effect, as you can see, and basically gives you a full police box at this point. Like you can't walk through it. It's completely solid. You get this beautiful snow map, which I think works really, really nicely with this Epsimo TARDIS. And yeah, you basically have a police box, which you can break and place and do whatever you want with. The other really cool thing is in creative mode, if you control middle click this, you actually get an MBT version, which means you can place the exact same configuration options somewhere else. And as you may have just seen, it works a little bit like an armor stand in the sense that there's a million different rotations for this thing. As you can see, it's not just like the classic four directions. There are loads and loads of different increments. So yeah, overall, a really, really cool block. So the final thing we're going to take a look at before heading to Scaro is the new Sonic system. So a Sonic is still crafted in exactly the same way as it was previously, although there's been a retexture to the Sonic emitter and I believe some of the Sonic crystal items. But yeah, it's still relatively expensive. You need a diamond, some 
crystalline, some refined sonic crystals, and then you also need a redstone circuit and a stainless steel ingot. Once you've got your hands on this sonic, however, it works a little bit differently. So as you can see, you have various different abilities on this sonic, and you unlock them as you gain XP. As you can see, as I've never used the sonic before, I XP is zero. So there are five different abilities, redstone, TNT, farmland, smelting, and entity. And you start with redstone unlocked by default. So we can take a better look at these by shift right clicking and as you can see you get this really cool new sonic gui so as you can see this is redstone and it basically tells you what you can use the sonic for so you can use it to activate redstone lamps dispensers iron doors steel doors iron trap doors droppers and darlicanium something i believe that's a darlicanium door although it might be quite helpful to add a feature where you could hover over it and see the full thing because as far as i'm aware there's no way to actually like expand this box anyway you've then got tnt which means you can ignite tnt and what i presume is minecraft classic tnt and then eventually you unlock farmland smelting so you can smelt all your ores and eventually you can interact with entities however you need xp in order to do that so for example let's use this door right here you have to hold it down until the little sonic bar becomes full and then it will open one thing I would say is that I really, really like this sort of cooldown system where you have to hold it down for some time instead of it just being instant. It's a nice bit of balancing. However, the noise is incredibly annoying and repetitive if it's actually intended to be held down. It seems like the noise should just be like a one use thing. Like that on its own sounds really, really cool. But it does seem a bit much when you're hearing it on repeat for the entire duration of that sonic cooldown thingy. And yeah, as you can see, it must have been Dalekanium doors because this is Dalekanium door and it works on this as well. But yeah, as you can see, we've just gained six XP for from that and then eventually we'd unlock the ability to ignite TNT and so on. And then we've also got the sonic interface so this isn't new or anything this has been in a previous update you can insert the sonic into this and then once you open the interface there's actually been some new sonic model additions and according to the change log there are five new sonics this update which can be found on the second page so by default these would of course be locked but I've unlocked them just to showcase the picture. So first of all we've got the 14th Doctor Sonic which looks really really cool. I'm actually going to apply this one just to have a little look. Yeah, yeah, this model is absolutely amazing and it's got some different sound effects as well. Next up, we've got the Lego screwdriver, which I think looks really, really cool. I love the sort of one by one brick on top. I have no idea what it's called, but you know what I mean? Those plasticky, shiny ones. That looks really, really cool. You've got the Sonic Wii mote, which looks brilliant. Again, it's just such a random feature, but it works so well and just looks really funny. And then we've got two more and I have to be completely honest. I don't actually know which way round these go because there's no name attached in game and I'm just reading it off the change log i believe this is the stylized sonic and then this is the XRS Sonic. To be honest, I'm literally just guessing here. I've got a 50% chance, but yeah, we've got these two extra additions, which look really, really nice. So that's pretty much all the Sonic changes, and now we're finally ready to move on to Scaro. I should also mention, however, there's actually another new dimension, and that is the classic Nether dimension. Now, I believe I'm correct in saying that that's because Weeping Angels can now spawn in the Nether. You get those Blackstone and Gilded Blackstone ones, and if you get touched by a Weeping Angel in the Nether, then you get sent to the classic Nether. So we can take a look at that. Now, I have to be honest, this classic nether doesn't nearly compare to the other classic dimensions in the mod. I mean, it's just one big continuous nether waste biome, which is sort of cool on paper, but I mean, it would have been really cool to see some classic netherrack textures, some of the classic quartz ore textures as well. I mean, I've seen nether gold ore spawning, so I assume ancient debris will still spawn as well, which obviously it wouldn't have done in classic versions, and the mob spawns seem to be exactly the same as well. I mean, we've got striders spawning down here. So yeah, it's a nice addition, but I think it could do with some work. Anyway, this is it arguably the most important and most impressive feature of this update and that is the return of Scaro. Oh, it's so, so cool to see. So yeah, Scaro is back and it is better than ever. So straight away, the first thing I'm noticing is these Thalma trees. I absolutely love the custom generation of these things. It would have been really easy to just sort of reskin an existing vanilla tree, but the attention to detail here with the actual proper custom trees is very, very cool. One thing you may have noticed though is the particle effect that I had surrounding me a second ago. That is because on Scaro, you actually have radiation too, constantly. And in order to combat this, we're gonna need some special equipment. So the easiest way to combat this is probably with some anti-radiation drugs which can be crafted using various fungi, a beetroot and a stainless steel ingot and once you consume one of these in survival mode as you can see the radiation effect is stopped and we have a new effect anti-radiation which lasts for 10 minutes and we're free to explore. One of the main things I've noticed straight away in comparison to the older Scaro is just how alive and detailed everything feels. So we've got some custom plants here as you can see we've got Mourn Willow, we've got 
grouper rods. We've got these saplings dotted around. We've got custom water, custom sky, custom particles. We've also got some naturally spawning regular grass blocks. Now, I'm not sure if this is deliberate or not, based on the fact that I'm assuming this uses a vanilla water pool. However, they've clearly accounted for this by also including a custom grass color there. So this blends in really, really nicely and is a nice alternative to the cinder grass, which is in this biome. Speaking of biomes, there are multiple on Skyro. This one is the irradiated jungle. So if we head a bit further afield, as you can see, there's a new biome over here, and this is the Skyro Mountains. Interestingly, the radiation effect seems to only apply as long as you're in the irradiated jungle. I've also just realized I've not seen any Daleks, and that's because stupidly I have mob spawning off. So let me turn that on. There we go, that's much better. I was talking about how alive everything feels, and I'd forgotten to turn on the only mobs that actually spawn here. But yeah, the generation of this mountain biome is so, so cool. You've got the red calatite, which is a beautiful looking block, by the way. I'd definitely like to have a look at using this in some builds in the future. You've got a custom stone calatite, which again looks really, really nice. And that's not it. There is one more biome on Skyro, and I'm going to fly around a bit and see if I can find it. I know I could locate it, but it's just quite cool to fly around and see all the different biomes, to be honest. And all the different world generation. I mean, look at this. It's literally a massive floating rock. I don't know if this is deliberate or not, but it sure looks cool. Aha! Here we go. There's the other biome I'm looking for. This is the Skaro Swamp. And as you can see, if I go into survival mode, this is another biome which has the radiation effect. However, as toxic as they may look, you are actually completely free to swim in these bodies of water, as long as you've got the anti-radiation drugs to stop the radiation poisoning. This biome is a lot simpler than the other two. It's kind of like a smaller ocean as opposed to an actual vanilla swamp, but I think it's really, really nice. The green effect of the ocean combined with the seagrass and everything on the floor is really, really cool. And in my opinion, the green water works a lot better than the green light lava that we got in 1.12. I believe it was toxic waste or something like this. I think this looks a lot cleaner. On top of everything on the surface, however, there is also a full underground network of caves. In these caves, you can find various ores. You've obviously got Dalekanium being the main prominent one. You've got Cinebrite, which is the one you can also find on the surface in the form of meteorites and stuff. Calatite Silica, and this just drops some regular silicon when mined. And then you actually also get diamonds spawning down here, but not just regular diamonds. They've actually the effort of adding a new type of diamond ore, which is color type diamond ore. Just sort of flying around in these caves, I'd say you could probably compare the rarity of Dalekanium to something like coal, potentially Cinebrite to iron, although to be honest, that's quite common as well. I think silica is probably closer to like redstone or gold or something like that. Diamonds are obviously pretty similar. I should also note, by the way, there are actually some blocks that I didn't note in the block section of the video. So these are the new color type and red color type blocks. I believe I'm right in saying a lot of these color type blocks were already in Dalek mod, but they've got complete retextures, and we've also got these new red Carlotite blocks. These are some particular favorites from me. I love the Carlotite pillar and the cracked Carlotite bricks, and then pretty much all of the red Carlotite blocks are incredible. I love the tile and the pillar design looks really, really cool. You've also got this really nice sort of plus design for the chiseled Carlotite bricks, and then the actual Carlotite bricks themselves are amazing. They're a lot more comparable to regular bricks than they are stone bricks, which is a really, really nice feature and it almost looks a little bit like mangrove wood to me, purely because the gaps between the bricks are the same colour as the actual block, but in a darker tone. I'd say this is much more comparable to planks than it actually is bricks, and it definitely blends in with these planks. So yeah, I could see some really cool building options for this block in the future. But yeah, we're not done with Skara quite yet. Next up, we need to take a look at structures, and there's one right here. So this is a Thal house, and I'm gonna be honest, I really don't think it should have spawned here in the middle of a swamp. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really look like it should be here. Still a very cool structure though. You've got a nice little hidden barrel down here with some extra wood blocks and a chest right here. And I like the Wither Rose and the Soul Lantern. They really fit in with the theme of Skaro. So if we look at the structure list, there are loads and loads of new structures. We've got Dalek ships, Dark Star Meteorites. This is another way to get your hands on some Dark Star Remnants, which do spawn very rarely on the surface of Skaro. We've got Carlid Ruins. We've got five different types of Carlitite Ruins. We've got Thal House, which is what we're at right here. A ruined Thal House and also some storm ruins. So we're just going to take a look at one of these color type ruins as they're all very similar to each other. So as you can see, these are relatively common. There's one roughly a thousand blocks away. And actually, this seems to be a bit of a structure hotspot. There's three in very close proximity to each other. But yeah, as you can see, there's not a lot to these ruined Carlid structures. There's another one over here, which I'm presuming is a very similar Carlid ruin. This one's got a little bit more going on. You can at least sort of see the outline of the house. And then we've also got another Thal House here. And yeah, this seems a lot more accurate 
accurate in terms of where it should be placed. And oh, look, you can see anti-radiation drugs in here. That's actually very clever. It means you don't necessarily have to craft your own. You can actually just find them around the place. From a gameplay perspective, it's definitely good. Although I have to admit, lore-wise, I'm not quite sure why the Thal needed anti-radiation when they kind of live on the planet with radiation. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm being a little bit picky here. And then different to the Thal ruins, if you go underground, you can also find some Khalid ruins. So Khalid's are obviously the other species that lived on Skaro, which were eventually turned into Daleks by Davros. So I think this is a very, very cool structure. It's a lot bigger than the Thal houses and has some really cool features. For example, all of the Dalekanium doors. You've got all of these storage vaults. And as far as I'm aware, these are just used for decoration. They're all empty. As you can see, if we power them, they do all seem to be empty. But yeah, there are some very cool rooms in this thing. You've got all the corridors. You've got another room here with sort of like a ruined table. And you've also got a new mob, which I completely forgot to mention earlier. These are giant clams, and you can find these inside these Carlage structures. And as you can see, if we go into survival mode, these are hostile. However, they're extremely slow. They do do quite a lot of damage though, so I'd be very careful. Not only that, but you can also find these giant clams spawning in caves all over the place. And here's another custom mob which I was looking for. This is the Magnodon. That's, I think that's how you say it. And surprise, surprise, these things are also hostile. As you can see, yeah. Oh, that was the clam. Never mind. As you can see, these things are a little bit faster than the clams, but still relatively slow. And as a result, they do slightly less damage than the clams do. From what I can tell, not only is there not any custom sounds with these guys, but there's not actually any sounds at all. So that might be quite cool to see in the future. Just briefly, saying as it was nearby, we'll also take a look at the Dark Star Meteorite. And as you can see, because of the snow on the ground in the Dalek Mountains biomes, these things can actually be quite difficult to identify, particularly if you're looking at it from above. It's basically just the odd fire and magma that you have to hint at its location. And these work exactly like meteorites in the overworld. If you dig into it, you will eventually find a decent amount of this dark star ore. Not quite as much as you'd find inside an overworld meteorite, but that makes sense because this stuff is supposed to be a lot rarer. And not too far away from our meteorite, just over this mountain range, we've got another one of the new structures, the return of the Dalek ships. So these look really, really good. I absolutely love the combination of the yellow terracotta and the Dalekanium blocks and everything along with the integration of the steel grates they look really really nice interestingly there isn't actually a proper way to get inside this thing there is no entrance as far as i'm aware you do sort of have to dig your way in and yeah as you can see these things have a lot of daleks inside them which i guess is to be expected considering there is not one not two actually it, it is just two i thought there was one in each corner but yeah that's still quite a lot of daleks spawning at a regular rate so i'm gonna destroy these things so these things don't have have any chests however they do have storage containers and this time because they've got a button in front of them as you can see you can power them and there is actually stuff inside them so you've got some dalekanium dalek plunger you've got some more anti-radiation drugs and a few different tardis items and that's not the only tardis blocks you can find obviously you've got the rotors and decorational blocks but you've also got a lot of scanners around the place and some proper tardis panels i mean you've got a coordinate panel dimension selector chameleon panels and you've got absolutely loads of these archon fuel tanks all around the place. So I think this thing is balanced quite well because while there is a lot of Daleks to deal with, there is a lot of loot as well, mainly to do with your TARDIS. So that pretty much leaves us with just one more structure to take a look at and that is the Storm Ruins. And as you can see, by the fact that the nearest one is 11,500 blocks away, these things are incredibly rare and for good reason. So from the surface, this thing might not look like much. However, this is actually the site of the brand new boss battle, the first one we've seen in the Dalek mod 1.16 update and this is the Dalek Storm battle hence the name Storm Ruins. So this block in the middle is the Dalek Storm spawner and as you can see it says emblemized Dalekanium 0 out of 5 on top. So what this is basically telling you is that you need to give this thing certain blocks in order for it to spawn the mob which I think is a really really clever system and it's not just emblemized Dalekanium that it asks for. It asks for loads of different blocks. In my testing I've seen Dalek plungers, netherite blocks, dark star ingots, nether star so you do have to take some serious gear with you on top of the stuff that you obviously want to use to fight the boss. And speaking of fighting the boss, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to grab the best gear I can and we're going to try and kill this thing in survival mode. Don't mind me, I just did a little bit of off-camera mining. It's bringing me back to my Dalek mod survival days. So we'll start giving this thing some items. First up, it asks for emblemized Dalekanium. And as you can see, as you add some, the texture actually changes. Next up, we've got refined Dalekanium, which I didn't bring. Just, just give me one second. 
Here we go. I've got a block of this. And oh, you're joking me. It wants another one. All right, surely this is it. Yep. And now we need a Dalek plunger. As you can see, the texture updates once again. This texture updating thing is really, really cool. But one thing I would say is it kind of needs to be almost more responsive because every time I've tested this in the past, it's really, it's basically jump scared me. Like I've not been expecting the Dalek storm to spawn any of the times. So while the texture update is cool, it is a little bit non-intuitive. But anyway, we'll give this thing a touch. See, see what I mean? This is ridiculous. I wasn't expecting that. But yeah, this is it. We're in the boss fight. And one of the first things I noticed when I launched into this boss fight was the insanely cool music. And I'll make sure to sort of separate the music in the edit so you can listen to it in its entirety. But yeah, it is super, super cool. And as you may have noticed, I'm I'm in full metal gear, the best armor in the game, and this thing is doing some considerable damage, so I should probably try and attack it. And as you can see, once we do that, we have a little thing in the bottom, which is stage one activation, and I've immediately died. Oh, I really should have set my spawn. But yeah, as I was saying, this thing is extremely powerful. So as you can see, we're now on stage two, which is online, and I believe in this stage, nothing much changes. He just does a bit more damage. The other thing that I noticed, which is kind of hard to point out while I'm dying, but it's really, really cool, is that the Dalek Storm texture actually updates as he changes through the stages. Anyway, we'll try and do a bit more damage now. As you can see, we're almost in the next stage. And there we go. We're on stage three, extra power. I'm going to have to defend myself. Oh, that was close. So I believe in stage three, Dalek Storm can now perform emergency temporal shift. In other words, he can teleport if you start doing too much damage. And this is active across all of the future phases as well. Yeah, as you can hear, you just heard emergency temporal shift. We didn't really see it because he mostly stayed in the same position. I'm actually going to change over to this battle axe. It's very, very fun to use. Again, you just heard it again. He did a little teleport. Now we're in artillery mode and it gets a little bit ridiculous. So as you can see, when he's in artillery mode, yeah, he fires explosive bullets. It's a little bit insane. And as if the explosive lasers weren't enough, he can still use the regular bullets and he can now fly. Yeah, this challenge becomes a lot more difficult. But the good thing is I, he tends not to move too much while he's flying. It can be a bit of a pain to get up to him. But once he does sort of get up here, he just sort of stays in the same place. And we've just witnessed another one of the things. Oh my gosh, this is getting ridiculous. As I was saying, we just witnessed another one of his new powers, which is the ability to spawn. Uh, I believe these are Time War Daleks, the black variants of the Time War Daleks that we saw earlier. Yeah, he can now spawn those Time War Daleks all around him. It is a really real, real challenge. Right, let's go and do a bit more damage. I'd also recommend bringing a bow for this bit, by the way. I haven't done. Let's see if we can get a crit. There we go. Stage five, full power. Here we go. And we've started a forest fire. Lovely. One of the things I did notice is that the other Daleks can sometimes actually attack Storm and get in a fight with the Dalek Storm, which is very, very helpful. And I'm going to have to start building with netherite. My aim is not good enough for this. There we go. Oh, he spotted me. He's got ridiculously good aim. Okay. Okay, he's teleported again. I've managed to take out most of the Daleks that were surrounding Storm. Now, hopefully, we should be able to get a bit closer to him. There he is. Okay, he has spotted me, but thankfully, the explosive lasers go away after that one stage, stage four, I believe it is. So, thankfully, we've now just got his normal lasers to deal with, which, by the way, are ridiculously accurate. Oh my gosh, here he is. Okay, that was a bad teleport. Uh, bad for me, at least. Great for him. Oh, brilliant. It's fine. This is why you set your spawn. We'll go again. Now, we are actually almost out of stage five. I thought there was only five stages, but I might be wrong here. And... Okay, okay, never mind. There is a sixth stage. Uh, okay, this is bad. And as you can see in stage six, Dalek Storm gets these really, really cool smoke particles to let you know that he's almost dead. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna use the bow. Oh, he's teleported over here. That is not good. I'm not on enough health for this. Oh, we might have it though. We might have it. Come on. Come on, please. No. Oh my gosh. He is literally one health. Come on. Let's finish this with the bow. One shot. One shot. One more. One more. No. How is he not dead? Yes. Oh, finally. Oh my gosh, that is ridiculously hard. And as you can see, you get one Dark Star Ingot from this and one Metal Nugget. Now, to be honest, this isn't a great drop. I mean, Metal Nuggets are just used to create Metal, unsurprisingly. Liquid Metal is created using Metal Nuggets and then Dalekanian Concentrate in a Lava Bucket in one of these engineering tables. And then the Dark Star Ingot is also quite helpful, but not too great. But it's not really about the reward you get out of it. It's the fact that you've defeated Dalek Storm. I think it's kind of like the war 
warden. Like, the drops aren't great, but at least you can go and boast to your friends. Anyway, I mean, it goes without saying that this boss battle is insanely cool. I mean, there's not a lot to say about it. I mean, it's incredibly challenging, but pretty well balanced, all things considered, as long as you remember to set your spawn and gear up before you do the fight. I'd say the storm ruins are pretty much as rare as they need to be. The spawner could do with a little bit of work, just in terms of the aesthetics and letting you know how close you are to spawning it. And of course, the music is absolutely phenomenal. I believe credit goes to May for that one. In fact, there is actually a music disc in the mod of that exact song. Yep, yeah, as you can see, Rana Fangirl. Yeah, brilliant music. And I think we're going to leave it there. This update is absolutely insane. It is so, so big. There is so much content and it's definitely worth trying out for yourself. There is, of course, a link to download the Dalek mod in the description if you haven't already. And I'll also leave the link to the Swid Team story video, as well as the Swid Team exclamation video, which actually at time of recording, despite what I mentioned in the intro, it hasn't actually come out yet. I recorded the intro before I did the rest of the video, assuming it would have been out by that point, but it actually isn't. But I'll put a link there as soon as it is. I'd also like to say a particular massive thank you to Kiseki, who helped me with loads of stuff for this update review, give me helpful insights into loads of the features so that I can give you guys an accurate and pretty well-rounded video. I'd also just like to mention that I will hopefully be streaming on the brand new Dalek Mod Universe server very soon, maybe in the next couple of days, so make sure you look out for that. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, then please leave a like or comment, and if you'd like to see more content like this, then please subscribe, but I've been DT10, and I will see you in the next video.